What's good people, it's Lewis or B. Bryce and I am back with a brand new video. Today I'm going to be working on part 7 of the Big Room Side Trance tutorial. Last episode we had done a really good job on making the break. It turned out really really well, I'm quite proud of it. Uh, and this episode we are working on the big old climax section right here, the big old super saws and top synths and the reverse synth and all this. Sabres, uh, Maurice West, w, w Jackson Vega, all this type, type of style here for the big old climax section. So that's, what we, that's what we're going to be working on today. Hopefully it turns out well. Um, as usual, we're going to play through what I've got so far for people who can't remember and to refresh refresh everyone's memory. And yeah, so uh, let's fix the drop tips because they seem to mess up a lot. And yeah, and this is what we have so far from the last episode. So I hope you enjoy. Here we go. And again, the drop synth's messed up. So yeah, that's what we have so far, sounding really, really good. Um, straight away, I heard right here, there's a sweep. But it sounds weird, so we're definitely going to add a crash there. Um, also, yeah, the main part we want to get done is a nice two-bar transition to the big climax section. So that's what we're going to do first. Get that sounding good. And then we'll start working on a eight-bar um, climax section with super source. So yeah, the first one we're going to do is just add a crash here as it will help with transition. And the one I'm going to use is this one right here. Turn up the trim to get rid of the excess bits at the start. And we'll just put it right after the sweep so it sounds like this now. Just need to turn it up louder. Perfect. So yeah, but straight away, the first thing I'm hearing is we want a sweep. And the one I've got in mind, as it works really well for these type of climaxes, is the one from Kashmir. Sounds like Kashmir Volume 2, VIP Friends, and it is the Headhunter's Sweep. As you can hear right there, it pans from left to right and it slowly speeds up from left to right. So it also just gives a nice amount of energy. Obviously, we, want, we don't want any... We're going to be creating a automation clip from the master volume to cut it all volume off from this one bar and then it all comes crashing back in here um, which is popular so that's what we're going to be doing we're going to drag this down to there turn up that in knob just a touch just to uh make it as aggressive and we're going to add on the end there turn it down Perfect. I'm going to put a generic de-clicking mode in it. As usual, to get rid of the fade there, so it's a nice fade, we'll do it with the crash as well. And the natural ambience. Uh, and then the next thing I want to add is 
an LFO riser, I guess. It's quite popular from WW nowadays. Uh, they uh, they made it, in my opinion, I thought they made it a little more uh, popular. Uh, where should we put it? We'll put it. Sure, we'll put it right here. We're going to add quite a few automation clips here, so we need to stack them up and put them on top of the pattern, otherwise they get a bit too messy. So the one I'm going to be using, I can't remember where I actually found it. It's just a silent one preset, and I'm pretty sure I saved it as yeah W and W LFO. Yeah, so we're gonna turn off the reverb. As the song is in D sharp, we're gonna choose one of the D sharp keys, probably this one. That seems to be the one. Um, We'll do it for the first bar and then three beats of the second bar. There's no point doing it here because it is going to be cut off. Make it yellow. And we're going to create an automation clip for the LFOs. Let's just call this LFO. Make it the effects color. There we go. And we just need to get the perfect rate percentage. This doesn't go too fast, it doesn't take too long to get sped up. So we just need to get this perfect here. That should work for now. It sounds pretty solid so far. We can make adjustments to it if needed. And we're just going to put it on the end here, turn it down. Add a tiny bit of EQ. Takes all that low end out. We don't really need it because of the impact. Takes care of that. Then what we are going to do is create an automation clip for the which number band is this? I forgot. Bad one, yep. The first band. And we're going to put it up just... What's it on now? 19%, so we'll put it up to 24. So it goes up 5%. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. That'll work. Like I said, it is going to get a bit messy with automation clips because we're about to create one for the reverb as well. Pretty similar reverb settings and all my stuff. Create one for the wet, create one for the dry. Bring the wet up, bring the dry down. Pretty standard. As you can see what I've done here on the final bar, I'll bring the wet all the way down so it just shuts off the reverb completely. We don't need it. So there's no point it being there. Straight away, we're going to create a point here as well for the dryer. Bring it down just a touch. Don't want it too aggressive. So yeah, we'll leave that for now. It seems to be good enough. We just stack all the automation clips there. I'm going to bring this down to there. The next thing I want to do is we need to make the sounds for the chords, pick the chord sounds and the lead sounds and all that to actually get to the part where we make a reverse synth. So I think for now, instead of um, wasting time, I think we'll just go straight on to getting a bass line down. I've got a bass line in, in my mind for the moment. It's very similar to the break one, so it feels like one track. We're just going to call this Climax Bass. I'm not sure what bass I'm going to use. If I'm going to use a sub bass or a res bass yet, I'm not entirely sure. But what I also want to do is bring these effects down below here because it's frustrating me. I like having my projects organized. FL Studio OCD at its finest as usual. So yeah, now that's down there, it's a lot cleaner. And I want to bring this down a couple of steps. So 
so we can add some more patterns. So we're going to create this for eight bars, which is there, I believe. Yeah. We'll make this a nice red color. Sure. So just for now, I'm going to use the current. We're gonna. I'm gonna stack a bunch of layers on this one. I'm just going to quit Climax for now, because what we can do afterwards, it will stack however many patterns, we'll right click this and click split by channel, and it will split them all. So we can just start building on one pattern and then we can split it at one. Makes it a lot easier. So for now, I'm just going to use the current Reese base, which is right here. Just so we can actually get a, um, a baseline down. Da, na, 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 na. Beautiful singer, wonderful. That sounds pretty solid. For the first bar, for the first five, four bars, sorry, we go to the F sharp, back to the C sharp, back to the D sharp, and then for the last four bars, we go to the, the G sharp. That's uh, two semitones higher, more of an uplifting feel. So we'll, we'll use that just for now, and now I'm just going to get another silent in. Well, I can actually, there we go. And we're going to use the basic. Trans Euphoria Euphoric Trans Volume 1. It's a big old bank name. I'm just going to browse through the leads again. So then these ones around here sound like some good super saws, so I think we'll go with this. We'll go with that one just for now, just to get a simple melody going. It sounds like a Sabres track. Uh, I don't want to make it too similar to a song, but this is what I have in mind. Just need to really turn this down, it's a bit loud. Trying to figure this out. Uh, if anything, I'll make an edit uh, so I don't waste too much time on this. So I'll actually, I think I might just do a speed lapse quickly, a time lapse uh, while I make this melody, so I don't waste anyone's time and bore everyone out whilst I'm making a melody. So yeah, I will see you back in about thirty seconds for a time lapse. So yeah, speak to you in a sec.
So yeah, I am back. Uh, at the moment, I am satisfied enough to move on. And we may make changes um, later or maybe in the next part. But yeah, this is what I actually come up with. It does sound similar to a track. I don't know if it's by Sabres or... I'm pretty sure it is Sabres. It might be an ID they released on their Instagram story if you follow them. Um, if anyone does recognise this and it is an existing one, be sure to put it down in the comments. I am intrigued because it is bugging me at this moment. But for now, we're just going to move on and continue with this. So yeah, this is what I have. And then I'll play it to see if it fits um, with the... Uh, Climax, yeah, this is what I have. Yeah, so pretty solid, just the end bit here. And yes, we're, just gonna, we're probably going to layer this melody up here uh, on the pluck, this one here. We're probably going to layer this up a few times. Uh, maybe lay up. I'll probably use a, a Reese bass this time. It does sound really good. I just like the characteristic of the sound. And we're going to add a couple super saw layers and yeah, see what it sounds like. So we're going to just keep building on this. Uh, I, I might actually use. We're going to copy this and add. We're going to copy a silent to clone it. And we're going to mute it, but we're going to paste these bass notes here so we can delete them off the original. So we just have the MIDI information because I might actually use this sound as a layer because it actually sounds pretty solid. And then what I might do now is I'm pretty sure I used um, the Reese basses from my Deep House pack. So what I might do is go back in it and use another one. Uh, I think I used, let's find out what one I actually used. But I use that one, but I might use this one for the actual um, climax. Like before, we turn up the crossfade, turn off the loop points, reset the time and pitch just in case there's any problems. Or we'll turn up the hold knob, turn down the attack, decay, sustain, and release. These the reed bases in C, so we don't need to change any root note thing here. So all we have to do is just. Re rename this um, Reese and a cool thing before we actually do that I just noticed for us I'm not on the actual climax pattern a cool thing with um, naming the pattern as it is once we split it say for example this would be, will be called Reese base when we split the pattern it will automatically add climax so it'll be called climax um, dash Reese base so it keeps everything organized so yeah we'll call this um, uh, I guess we'll call it Arp Melody 1. Uh, and then we'll do something with this one after. But what we're going to do is quickly just write down the bass, lo bass note MIDI again. I should have copied it over, but I actually didn't think of that. I'm a dummy. What I might do for the first half we'll make it go down to the B4 and then the second half it'll go up to the B5 then I hit the G sharp 5 as well just the octave changes um give it just a little bit of uh, character so what I might do as well for the longer notes here like the sustained uh, B D sharp F sharp and maybe in the G sharp I might do a tiny bit of gliding so we'll see what we can do here you just mute the art melody but I need it for this bit Turn on the metronome. And then we'll double click, make it a slide to B5. See what that sounds like with the glides. Sounds silly, we'll get rid of it. 
Maybe we'll just take it. Actually, what we might do is, as it's the F sharp and it goes to the C, if we pitch this down to the C sharp 6. Perfect. So this is this is the bass melody, um, and I do want to add a sound for this because this also gives it the uh, a nice rhythm because it's more of a bouncy bouncing between the actual melody and the bass note. So it already is on the. See if we've got any plucked basses. Sounds really good to be fair. So I'm not too surprised by that. Because of the, the sustain and the release is pretty low. So that is a little bit. The uh, bass is a little snappy. And I, I did turn off the delay, but I actually realized it actually gave it a bit more um, groove, a bit more head bounce. I learned, I learned a trick from Maurice West's um, Slam One Hour Challenge. Uh, before, I used to make everything the same rhythm because I didn't like. Um, oh, just to me, I thought like I, I was going by rules. But I actually learned that he. He actually, his chords and his bass and his lead all did separate rhythms and he actually worked really well and it said it gives it a, more of a um, groovy bounce, gets the head, the head going and gives it a bit more, um, it actually works at festivals better so we're probably going to go with that with the um, super sword so instead of doing the following notes he's probably going to do a bit more uh, different um, syncopated rhythm. Obviously the only problem now is this bass is clashing with the reeds but we can take care of that later. What I want to do now is just clone this art melody again and get another lead going. Yeah, this one sounds good. It's a little octave higher. We'll name this art melody 2. And what I actually might do with this one is copy these bass notes. And add it on to the pluck two. So we're going to mute this one in the reese just to see what it sounds like. I'll see the number one will be the forefront one. We'll turn number two down, but because it's an octave higher, it gives it a bit more uh, characteristics. So we'll, we will turn it down so it'll be a, a, a support layer. Plus a support layer. If you turn it off, you see a big difference. Lovely. We'll get in there. It's not sounding perfect straight away. It obviously takes work and mixing to get it like that. So we are getting there. We um, seem to layer it up a bit more and stack it up. Make the sound a bit more thicker. Yeah, next I'm not sure if I want to add any more. We'll probably add a more um, like a square gliding lead following this. But we'll have it nice and tucked in the back. Um, but I think now we'll... Um, We'll add a super saw layer just to get a, an idea of the rhythm. So I believe these ones around here will starting to get a little super saw sounding. 
We probably could add this. We'll, we'll save that one just in case. This could be a nice lead I was just talking about, about the square gliding layer. That actually worked perfect. So we'll keep that there just for now. We'll open another silent. I believe it was this one. So we'll go from here. We'll use this one just for now. Very loud. Turn the main volume down from the plugin itself. And we'll name this Super Saw 1. Like I said before, as the, the actual pattern name is Climax, once we split it here, split by channel, it will be called Climax Super Saw 1. Incredibly helpful, it just makes the uh, organized incredibly organized and everyone should know by now my FL Studio OCD is at an incredibly high level so right now I'm going to mute these three just have this the Reese bass playing and we're going to write down the chords actually do is swap these two so this will play the original and then the D sharp will play this one just to reinforce the melody and rhythm and go back in to the and reset yeah perfect and we'll just copy this to the G sharp and it should be good another tip if you didn't know Instead of going through each chord and making the chord, as you notice, the D sharp shows up five times throughout the whole sequence. So we'll highlight all the D sharps and make the chord, and, and there you go. All of them have it. Let's really go through and turn some of the octave layers down. There you go. What about if you turn part B down? Should be good. We'll just turn it down a little bit more. Again, there's two times that the B show up, so we'll make a chord out of that. B, D sharp, F sharp. Same with S sharp, or C sharp, my apologies. That'll go to the C sharp, F, G sharp, and the F sharp here. We'll go to the A and the C, and then the G will go to the B and the D sharp. What you also could play around with is, is inverted chords. Uh, if you don't know what inverted chords are, it's still, for example, what I wasn't doing with here. An inverted G sharp could be either that there, so it's the B first, then the G sharp, then the D sharp. It's still a G sharp uh, minor, but it's just inverted. So what I was going to do is take the, the D sharp seven down to the D sharp six. Instead of it being like this, it'd be like this. So the D sharp is lower, but it's still a G sharp minor chord. Perfect. 
Nice. It, this is still very, very loud, but now we have the chords down. We can, we can go back through the sounds and see what they sound like. So let's just mute and solo the super saw. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to turn the master volume down, I guess it's getting a bit loud. Turn the reverb off, and we're going to turn that sustain down, which is part B. Right, so for now, we're going to add all these five into a mixer track. There's number 75 from there. I'm going to do a tiny bit of volume adjustments and then we're going to layer a bit more. So yeah, we'll go for everything and we'll can solo this one. This is actually the forefront of the art melody, so this will be at the front. This one will be at the, a little bit lower than the original as you can see i cut the low end off here up to 90 hertz and we're going to add another one just to dip that b frequency here Right there, just a little bit, we'll dip it 1.5 decibels. And we'll boost the mid frequency just a little bit. As you can see, the Super Sword was clipping incredibly, so they can be a bit messy, so be careful with them. As the um, plucked bass has a ping pong delay on it, it gives it a lot of movement. You just got to make sure that it doesn't go on for too long. It actually seems to be the perfect length. However, it can get a little messy in your mix. But at the moment, it does sound really, really good. to remove the low end here because obviously we have the plucked bass uh, midi playing as well right there and i also want to put a stereo enhancer just to turn it a bit to the sides This light in particular, very resonant in the 1K Hertz. Just gonna dip that down just a little bit. And we're gonna take just a, t a little bit of the high end. It's a super source, like I said, in my live streams, I do get a lot of demos and super source are very, very hissy. So you gotta tame them a lot. Make sure you don't have like seven super source layering and all boosted like that, because it will get very, very messy. 
so you have to tame them because these top layers also have high frequencies. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, I like the sound of this one, but I don't want it to be the forefront super saw. I'm probably going to look in another bank for another super saw. Um, the trance ones are very, very um, release heavy, reverb heavy, and high frequency heavy. Um, pretty sure that there is a pretty nice one in the revealed one. It's also pretty hissy. We're going to turn down this white noise. Turn off the reel and delay. And turn down the cutoff. I should do this is copy this MIDI information here. And we're going to call this Super Saw 2. There we go. Hold Shift and scroll on the selected thing and it'll bring it up. And we're going to paste this MIDI. Move the respace along, same trick, hold shift and scroll. It'll move it along just a tiny bit, just so we can uh, be organized, because I want the Super Saw 2 to be next to the Super Saw 1 mixer slot. Just turn up the release just a tiny bit. So we could use number two just to be more on the sides. So we do want this uh, art belly to, to be the forefront sound. We want this to be the main, uh, the main attraction, the main thing the ear hears. Um, the super saw layers are in the back just to fill up the empty gaps, like here, here, stuff like that. Um, and it also just, just adds, like I said, a bit more, a bit more harmonics because it is playing chords. We are getting the, the A sharp and the C sharp and the, the B, for example, and it just gives it a bit more harmonics and it also fills out the mid frequency just a tiny bit. So now I'm going to see what this square lead sounds like once we add this in. And we're going to click Control L and it will extend it out all the notes. We're going to turn on glide mode. As you can hear what I've done now, I turn on the portamento, change it to slide. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then, yeah, turn up the portamento to just below halfway. And you can see, as you can hear, it glides on notes. What we want to do now is just turn up the attack just a little bit, just to get rid of that initial click. even very loud so we turn it down control l this one we can we can take all the way up to like 450 hertz as you can see in the top left we don't need them lower frequencies and this sound is already seems to be moving from left to right pretty consistently on its own
So I'm going to do here is right click, create group. We're going to call this Climax Bus. And it's going to give it its own little thing. I'm going to make it blue. And what we want to do is route to this channel only the ARP, the square, the ARP2. And we're just going to add a bit of ping pong delay ourselves. Turn this one off. We'll keep the reverb. And yeah, so this none of these sounds have delay on them, so we're going to make our own. Fruity delay 2. We're going to put it on time 2 there on the top right, top left, apologies. Ping pong, turn the pan all the way up. Bit of OTT, sprinkle it up. to do quickly here is the, is the release on this sound is a bit too aggressive and I am going to add an OTT on this one as well sounding solid of course all the white noise and the claps and the crowd chants and all this stuff will add on to this um, but let's see what we sound like so far i'll mute the rest of the track there we go Yeah, still sounding, it still sounds a little bit weak. We, we are going to fix that with distortion and saturation and stuff. But for now, the general melody and idea is here. Um, I might add a super saw bass as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Get a little cough today. That's not nice. But yeah, we're going to load another silent. And we just want a simple um, now do we call this super saw bass or yeah super saw bass sure. I'm just going to copy the MIDI information from this Reese bass to this one. Uh, we can delete the glide uh, notes, we don't need them. Take this B down. Take the high frequencies out, we don't really need them up until at least 2 kilohertz. My thing we're going to do is just boost the low end on this Reese bass just to give it a bit more fatness.
As you can see, I added a camel crusher just to beef up the square lead. I'm just going to add a glue compressor and put a Make them all sound as one. The only thing that gives it more energy now is just the super saw leads. So we need to make these a lot more powerful. So we'll probably add one more as well. And then we're adding it in eight, slot 81 there. And then we just need to do some processing, some saturation, distortion, EQing, and add a big reverb. And that will uh, hopefully fill up the mix and make it nice and fat. And then hopefully the claps and the effects take care of the rest. So yeah, I'm just going to get a drink because my throat is getting a little sore. And yeah, I'll be back in a second. And I am back. Apologies for that. Yeah, I just realized as well when I stopped the part to uh, go get a drink that we've been recording for 49 minutes. So we're just going to do two or three more things and then start wrapping up this part. I don't want it to be too long. Um, but yeah, uh, not too bad for 49 minutes. I, I would have hoped to, to um, got a solid amount from this to this done, but we can always finish that in the next part. So yeah, next part, part eight, probably just finish off these little bits here and then working on the second build, which wouldn't be too long as well because we can just use a lot of this stuff here. But yeah, the last um, two or three stuff I want to add is just a clap um, to uh, get the rhythm going, the four to the floor clap. So the one I'm going to be using is from Jackson Vegas Essentials and it's going to be clap number 11. Obviously you can see it's not in time, it's 128 BPM, but what you can do is right click the time, click four bars, reset the pitch. I'm going to turn it in and out and up, up a little bit just so the sample isn't overpacking. And yeah, let's turn these down just a tad. Add these in as well. Uh, probably add the cashmere ones in as well, see what they sound like. And the last thing I want to do is add a simple white noise sweep down, which we'll get from cashmere. Good old cashmere. Volume 2, effects, and then I'm pretty sure it's exhausts. This one works perfect, and we'll get that one to go with it as well. Wonderful. So we just turn these down, we'll mute the one, and then vice versa. Perfect. So yeah, I guess we'll leave it there for now. Um, 50 minute part is pretty solid. Uh, it did drag on a little bit because um, yeah, I was picking leads and that. But yeah, for part eight, we'll finish off this. We'll make a reverse synth of what we have. We'll perfect this part and then we'll move on to the build. But yeah, that's part seven done. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button. Help the channel grow, makes me happy. I do apologize, I am getting a little sick it seems. Um, hopefully I can make this cough go away before my next uh, video or my next main part 40 minute video so I ain't coughing throughout but yeah I have a new uh, video coming Friday so it's going to be a 10 minute challenge and until then I've got a new live stream Monday I will speak to you soon and have a wonderful day